back in this thing again for another review this is q's insight i am cali and today we're here to talk about a movie called pray for the devil okay uh, this was a movie that came out in 2002 wait a second hold up hold up hold up um if you've been in this channel before, you already know how we do it. We started off with the premise, three favorite scenes, and then the grade. And then we go <laughs> to the next one, baby. All right. So again, this movie is called Pray for the Devil. Movie came out in 2002. All right. Now, when this movie um, was announced... I was definitely interested into watching this movie. Um, I love horror movies, of course. You can tell that by my channel. If you've seen any of my reviews, right? Now, beyond that, um, I was I was really interested into watching this movie. I did not see this movie in the theaters at all. Um, but I was eventually able to see it. Um, and I'm talking about recently. So, anyways, like I said, Pray for the Devil. Movie came out in 2022. Okay, so this movie is based, or is is basically about a character named Sister Anne. Okay, um, Caucasian lady. Um, she is a nun. All right, or 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 a helper to nuns. I don't know if it's like some type of situation where they have two different type of nuns, ones that work in like churches and ones that work in like asylums, because it's like where she was at. It kind of was like an asylum slash hospital, you know, I guess, slash church type thing, right? Anyways, so we come to find out a lot about this character. First of all, when Anne was young, her mother uh, was diagnosed uh, with um, schizophrenia, okay? But... Anne feels like her mom was actually possessed, okay? So that's one thing, all right? She knows about and has experience with dealing with, you know, per se supernatural situations. Because like I said, like anybody, some, some people may take the situation of her mother actually being, you know, just sick in the head and, 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 um, and being psychotic, all right? And, um, and, and, you know, just whatever else, right. Or schizophrenia as well. But some people can also see schizophrenia as being possessed because you're, you're hearing a voice in your head telling you to do things, right. And then you act upon these things, right. Or if it's even that you feel like you become a different person and you start doing things like that, that can also be considered possession. All right. If you really want to get down to the literal, like, meaning of possession, okay? Um, so, anyways, she's dealt with this uh, type of situation that she's felt was a possession before through dealing with her mother throughout her whole, like, young ages of growing up, bro, which is very disturbing. Um, we do come to find out that her mother did take her life, Okay. But for a while, it was going on, okay? Now, as Sister Anne grew up, she wanted to get into the church. She got into the church. Why not, right? After all the, all the stuff you thought that happened to your mother, her being possessed, you know, you being um, basically, you know, just, just tortured by someone that's supposed to love you, that does love you, but tells you that she is only acting on the voice inside of her head, right? So... Sister Anne goes um, about her faith 
with Christianity. She becomes a nun, okay? And when she gets to, um, there's, there's a certain uh, patient that she ends up having, okay? And her name is, um, ooh. I straight up. So, the character's name is Natalie. Now, she is possessed by a demon. Um, We come to find out, right? But when she is her regular, when she's at her natural state, her favorite, you know, person is Sister Anne, Okay. Um, and then we have a situation where sister Anne is, um, trying to do her best to free Natalie's character or Natalie's, um, yeah, not Natalie's character of this possession that's, that's being, um, taking place within her. Now, I'm going to end it there. Just because that is enough um that that that's enough that's enough you get the premise you can get the premise from that so um hopefully that's something that you guys would want to go see go check it out if not, I guess not if you have seen it, you already know it's popping right but anyways, that's basically gonna be the premise of this movie for me now three of my favorite scenes which will which may be out of order, and but will definitely, most definitely be spoilerish. So if you haven't seen the movie and you want to go watch it, stop the video now. Go back and watch it. Come back. Hear what I got to say. If you don't care about hearing any spoilers or anything like that, stay here. Watch the movie eventually or don't. If you have seen the movie, you already know it's popping. All right? So three of my favorite scenes would be basically... Um, Seeing young Anne and her mother, um, you know, we get breakdowns of that scene um, twice or maybe a few times. But definitely, you know, one 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 scene we see that, you know, her mother is trying to get inside of uh, Anne's room. But Anne locks the door and she's sitting there steadily praying. We see that her mother goes ballistic because she can't get inside of Anne's room. She starts banging her head against the door. Perfect opening. Perfect, all right? But just also, I want to add to that the continuation of the story for in which we see that, you know, her mother combs her hair, humming this song. Every time this happens, Anne, she knows that her mother is about to go into this mode where she's probably going to be hurting Anne. So every time she hears her mother hum, every time her mother's combing her hair, she knows what's about to happen. We see the scene where it does take place. And we learn that, you know, the mom could be either, I guess you can say possessed or, um, um, you know, <sighs> be, um, and I said this word like so many times and I can't remember right now. I don't know why. Um, <laughs> but either ways, <laughs> she could be possessed or she could just be uh, uh, sick of the mind. Okay, we'll say it like that. Because for some reason I can't remember the word, even though I said it earlier. It starts with S. You know what I'm talking about. Anyways. Um, you know, that, that just, it, it was, it was a very, um, crucial layout. Just like I said, just from the opening, seeing that very, very little bit of the portion of, of that scene and then seeing the continuation of that scene where in which her mother combs her hair, da, 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 da. It just, it's, it's, it's a very, it's a very, um, perfect opening. 
and then also a continuation to that scene to be very disturbing. You know what I'm saying? Uh, my second favorite scene would be uh, Padre Dante and uh, Sister Anna um, trying to save Amelia. Now, we come to find out that uh, Padre Dante's um, sister is, I guess, possessed. She opened herself up to possession because of the fact that she was feeling depressed and blah, 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 blah. Um, you know, because she had a kid, she was raped and she had a kid and the, the, the kid did not, the baby did not, um, live. Okay. So therefore she blames herself. She's condemning herself. She, she, she wants the worst for herself. Right. So being that a demon is allowed to bore inside of her. And so being that Padre Dante is with Sister Anne and no Sister Anne has this type of connection where she can actually feel the victim of this possession and try to help them out rather than trying to cast out the demon, like have the victim cast the demon out themselves because you're reaching to the core of that human and you know that they're still there. You know what I'm saying? So, um, which is a, is an interesting, um, ideal. I will say that for sure. Uh, never really thought of it like that, right? Um, but, you know, him being so close to Sister Anne, knowing her capabilities, knowing what she can possibly do, he wants her to try to save Amelia. They go to uh, Amelia's, uh, they go to uh, Padre uh, Dante's mother's house where Amelia stays, okay? They try to perform an exorcism. It gets crazy, bro. Shorty... Amelia is not pregnant no more, but when they start praying over her, bro, she becomes pregnant again, right? You see hands and prints pushing out of her stomach, bro. It's pretty crazy scene, okay? Um, and then we get to the point where it seems like Anne gets through to Amelia. So therefore, you're thinking everything is okay. Come a couple hours later, bro, it just ends up being that the demon felt like it was being... Um, cast out, so it kind of hit itself, and then uh, poked his head back out later on, and basically um, killed Amelia, so Amelia ends up dying, bro, it's crazy, you think that she's saved, but she's not, so that's my second favorite scene, my third favorite scene would be Anne fighting um, the demon inside of her, when, at the very end, when she is, um, when she is trying to save Natalie, and, you know, back against the wall, and we know that this demon has been wanting to get inside of Anne, possess her specifically because she was one of God's uh, warriors, right? And we know this. They, they talk about it in the in the movie, right? So, you know, she ends up letting the, the demon in, which allows Natalie to be free, which of course she's going to do that because we come to find out that Natalie is actually Anne's daughter. Okay, but she does that and then she becomes possessed. But we know, we know for sure that like she has the power to fight against the demons because she sees, you know, the situation that's at fault. You know what I'm saying? And because of that, she can see it on others. Of course, she'd be able to see it through herself and free herself. You know what I'm saying? So she freed herself. God, Lord willing, you feel me? But she freed herself. You feel me? And um, so that was my third favorite scene. The grade for this movie, man, I thought it wasn't a bad movie at all. I thought it was definitely above average. And it is above average when you hear this grade. So 7.6. All right. 7.6 out of 10. So definitely above average. Worth your time. If you guys like exorcism movies or just horror movies just in general, you feel me? Um, definitely check this movie out. It's worth your time, bro. It's worth your time for sure. Um, if you guys seen this movie, let me know some of your favorite scenes. Uh, would you willing? Would you be willing to see a Pray for the Devil number two, or whether it be a prequel or a sequel? Um, and what was the grade that you gave this movie? You know, what I'm saying, did you like it or did you hate it? Um, if you guys didn't see the movie already, go back and watch it. Then let me know what you thought. If you guys already seen the movie, let me know what you thought. Um, but if you guys don't care about nothing, you just watch the review. So be it. All right. Uh, I think that's it for this video. Please remember to like, subscribe, and share. As always. This is Q's Insight. I am Callie. Until next time.